NWA, NWA, an abbreviation for niggas with attitudes, was an American hip-hop group from Los Angeles, California. They were among the earliest and most significant popularizers and controversial figures of the gangsta rap subgenre, and are widely considered one of the greatest and most influential groups in the history of hip-hop music. Active from 1986 to 1991, the rap group endured controversy owing to their music's explicit lyrics, which many viewed as being disrespectful to women, as well as to its glorification of drugs and crime. The group was subsequently banned from many mainstream American radio stations. In spite of this, the group has sold over 10 million units in the United States alone. Drawing on their own experiences of racism and excessive policing, the group made inherently political music. They were known for their deep hatred of the police system, which sparked much controversy over the years. The original lineup, formed in 1986, consisted of Arabian Prince, Dr. Dre, Easy E, and Ice Cube. DJ Yella and MC Run joined later, with Arabian Prince eventually leaving shortly after the release of their debut studio album, Straight Outta Compton, 1988, and Ice Cube following suit in December 1989. Eazy-E, Ice Cube, MC Run and Dr. Dre would later become platinum-selling solo artists in the 1990s. Their debut album marked the beginning of the new gangsta rapera as the production and social commentary in their lyrics were revolutionary within the genre. NWA's second studio album, Niggas for Life, was the first hardcore rap album to debut at number one on the Billboard 200 sales charts. Rolling Stone ranked NWA number 83 on their list of the 100 greatest artists of all time. In 2016, the group was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, following three previous nominations. NWA was assembled by Compton-based ECE, who co-founded Ruthless Records with Jerry Heller. Easy E sought an introduction to Steve Yano. Although initially rebuffed, Yano was impressed by Easy E's persistence and arranged a meeting with Dr. Dre. Initially, NWA consisted of Easy E and Dr. Dre. Together with fellow producer Arabian Prince, Ice Cube was added to the roster after he had started out as a rapper for the group CIA. Dre would later bring DJ Yella on board as well. Dre and Yella were both formerly members of the world-class and crew as DJs and producers. Ruthless released the single Panic Zone in 1987 with McCullough Records, which was later included on the compilation album NWA and the Posse. NWA was still in its developing stages, and is only credited on three of the eleven tracks, notably the uncharacteristic record Panic Zone, Eight Ball, and Dope Man, which marked the first collaboration of Arabian Prince, DJ Yella, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. Mexican rapper Crazy D co-wrote Panic Zone, which was originally called Hispanic Zone, but the title was later changed when Dr. Dre advised Crazy D that the word Hispanic would hinder sales. Also included was Easy es solo track Boys and the Hood. NWA released their debut studio album, Straight Outta Compton, in 1988. With its famous opening salvo of three tracks, the group reflected the rising anger of the urban youth. The opening song Straight Outta Compton introduced the group, Fuck the Police protested police brutality and racial profiling, and Gangsta Gangsta painted the worldview of the inner-city youth. While the group was later credited with pioneering the burgeoning subgenre of gangsta rap, NWA referred to their music as reality rap. Twenty-seven years later, member and co-producer of the Straight Outta Compton film, Ice Cube, commented they were talking about what really led into the style that we ended up doing, which is now called hardcore gangster rap. Dr. Dre and DJ Yella, as high-powered productions, composed the beats for each song, with Dre making occasional rapping appearances. The DOC, Ice Cube, and MC Ren wrote most of the group's lyrics, including Fuck the Police, perhaps the group's most notorious song, which brought them into conflict with various law enforcement agencies. Under pressure from Focus on the Family, Milt Olerich, an assistant director of the FBI, sent a letter to Ruthless and its distributing company Priority Records, advising the rappers that advocating violence and assault is wrong and we in the law enforcement community take exception to such action. This letter can still be seen at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. Policemen refused to provide security for the group's concerts, hurting their plans to tour. Nonetheless, the FBI's letter only served to draw more publicity to the group. Straight Outta Compton was also one of the first albums to adhere to the new parental advisory label scheme, then still in its early stages, the label at the time consisted of warning, moderate impact coarse language and or themes only. However, 
The taboo nature of NWA's music was the most important factor of its mass appeal. Media coverage compensated for NWA's lack of airplay and their album eventually went double platinum. One month after Straight Outta Compton, Easy E's solo debut Easy Does It was released. The album was dominated by Easy's persona, MC Ren was the only guest rapper, but behind the scenes it was a group effort. Music was handled by Dr. Dre and DJ Yella, the lyrics were largely written by MC Ren, with contributions from Ice Cube and the DOC. The album was another double platinum success for Ruthless, in addition to girl group JJ Fat in 1988 and singer Michelle in 1989. 1989 saw the reissue of NWA and the Posse and Straight Outta Compton on CD, and the release of the DOC's No One Can Do It Better. His album was essentially a collaboration with Dr. Dre and notably free of gangsta rap content, including the NWA Posse Cut the Grand Finale. It would become another number one album for the record label. Ice Cube left the group in December 1989 over royalty disputes, having written almost half of the lyrics on Straight Outta Compton himself. He felt he was not getting a fair share of the profits. A lawsuit brought by Ice Cube against band manager Jerry Heller was settled out of court. He wasted little time putting together his solo debut, 1990's America's Most Wanted, but he avoided mentioning his former label mates. NWA's title track from their 1990 EP 100 Miles and Runnin', however, included a diss of Ice Cube, We started with five, but yo, one couldn't take it, so now it's four, cause the fifth couldn't make it. The video for the song depicted the remaining members of NWA together in a jail cell, while an Ice Cube lookalike is released. Also heard on the EP, which found its way on the Afeel for Zagan CD reissue, was Real Niggas, a full-blown diss on Ice Cube where the remaining members accuse him of cowardice, and question his authenticity, longevity and originality, how the fuck you think the rapper lasts, with your ass saying shit that was said in the past, yo, be original, your shit is sloppy, get off the dick. You motherfucking carbon copy, and we started out with too much cargo, so I'm glad we got rid of Benedict Arnold, yo. The song 100 Miles and Runnin' was Dr. Dre's final up-tempo recording, which had been a common feature of late 1980s hip-hop. After this, he focused on a mid-tempo, synthesizer-based sound which would become known as G-Funk, starting with Always Into Something from a Feel for Zagan in 1991. The G-Funk style dominated both the West and East Coast hip-hop music scene for several years to come. NWA is referenced on Ice Cube's 1990 EP, Kill At Will, where he named checks his former group, likely in a mocking manner, on the song Jack and Four Beats. On I Gotta Say What Up. Comma Ice Cube gives shoutouts to his rap peers at the time, among them Public Enemy, Ghetto Boys, and Sir Jinx. Dot at the end of the track, in what appears to be an on-the-phone interview, Ice Cube is asked, since you went solo, what's up with the rest of the crew? And the phone ice abruptly hung up on the interviewer. The group's second full-length release, 1991's A Feel for Zagan, Niggas for Life spelled backwards, re-established the band in the face of Ice Cube's continued solo success. The album is considered by many Dr. Dre's finest production work, and it heralded the beginning of the G-Funk era. It also showed a clear animosity towards their former member and derogatory references to Ice Cube are found in several songs. The interlude A Message to B.A. echoes the beginning of his song Turn Off the Radio from America's Most Wanted, Ice Cube is first addressed by the name Benedict Arnold, after the infamous traitor of the American Revolution, but then named outright in a torrent of abuse from both the group and its fans, when we see yo ass, we gun cut yo hair off and fuck you with a broomstick spoken by MC Ren. The NWA Ice Cube feud eventually escalated, both on record and in real life. America's Most Wanted had avoided direct attacks on NWA, but on Death Certificate, Ice Cube's second full-length release, he retaliated. He sampled and mocked the message to B.A. skit before embarking on a full-blown tirade, the infamous No Vaseline. In a series of verses, Ice Cube verbally assaulted the group, you lookin' like straight bozos slash I saw it comin' that's why I went solo, kept on stompin', when your motherfuckers moved straight out of Compton, you got jealous when I got my own company, beat him a man and ain't nobody helping me. He also responded to members MC Ren, Dr. Dre, and Easy e individually to 100 miles and running, claiming I started off with too much cargo, dropped four niggas and now I'm making all the dough, using homophobic metaphors to describe their unequal business relationship with Jerry Heller, who became the target of harsh insults, get rid of that devil real simple, put a bullet in his temple, cause you can't be the niggas for life crew, with the white Jew telling you what to do.
The song attracted controversy for its anti-Semitism, the beginning of such accusations against Ice Cube during his affiliation with the Nation of Islam, based on the bashing of Heller's religion. The track was omitted from the UK release, and later pressings included a censored version of the song. In September 1990, members of Hip Hop Act Above the Law clashed with Ice Cube and his posse de lynch mob during the annual New Music Seminar Conference, forcing the latter to flee the premises of Times Square's Marriott Marquis, the venue of the event. On January 27, 1991, Dr. Dre assaulted Dee Barnes, host of the hip hop show Pump It Up, after its coverage of the NWA Ice Cube beef. According to Rolling Stone reporter Alan Light in response, Dre commented, People talk all this shit, but you know, if somebody fucks with me, I'm gonna fuck with them. I just did it, you know. Ain't nothing you can do now by talking about it. Besides, it ain't no big thing, I just threw her through a door. 1991's Niggas for Life would be the group's final album. After Dr. Dre the DOC initially departed from Ruthless to join Death Row Records and allegations over Eazy E being coerced into signing away their contracts, while however retaining a portion of their publishing rights, a bitter rivalry ensued. Dr. Dre began the exchange with Death Row's first release, 1992's Fuck With Dre Day, and Everybody Celebrating, and its accompanying video featured a character named Sleazy E who ran around desperately trying to get money. The insults continued on the chronic with Bitches Ain't Shit. Easy e responded in 1993 with the EP It's On, Dr. Dre, 187 Killa on the track's Real Motherfuckin' G's and It's On. Easy e accused Dr. Dre of being a homosexual, calling him a she thang, and criticizing Dre's new image by calling him and Snoop Studio gangsters. The music video for Real Motherfuckin' G's showed a still of Dre wearing makeup in a sequin jumpsuit. The photos dated back to Dr. Dre's world-class and crew days, when such fashion was common among West Coast electro-hop artists, prior to N.W.A.'s popularization of gangsta rap. Eazy E kept dissing Dre and Death Row on most of his songs until his AIDS-related death on March 26, 1995. Even Eazy E's longtime friend MC Ren voiced his dislike for Eazy E in 1994, calling Eazy E a big head and wannabe megastar and even suggesting that N.W.A. should reunite without Easy e M.C. Ren later said that the only relationship he had with Easy e was through Ruthless Records, where he released several gold and platinum-selling albums, including Kiss My Black Is and Shock of the Hour. Easy e and M.C. Ren would squash their beef shortly before Easy es death in their 1995 duet The Motherfuckin' Real after two years of not talking to each other. All bad blood finally ceased within the rest of the group. Dr. Dre MC Ren and Ice Cube would later express their reevaluated feelings to their old friend on 1998's Ruthless for Life, 1999's What's the Difference and Shinshek, 2000's Hello, 2006's Growing Up, and in the 2011 music video I Need a Doctor. Having both parted with Ruthless Records on bad terms, tensions between Ice Cube and Dr. Dre eventually eased on their own. After Ice Cube made a cameo appearance in Dr. Dre's Let Me Ride video in 1993. The two recorded the hit song Natural Born Killers for Snoop Doggy Dogg's 1994 short film and soundtrack Murder Was the Case. Ice Cube also later appeared on MC Ren's album Ruthless for Life on the track Coming After You. MC Ren appeared on Dre's 1999 album 2001, and the three remaining NWA MCs would reunite for Hello and Ice Cube's 2000 album War and Peace Volume 2, The Peace Disc, and the song Chin Check for the Next Friday soundtrack, a movie starring Ice Cube. The West Coast and gangsta music scene had however fallen out of the spotlight since the death of Tupac Shakur in 1996, and it was only after Dr. Dre's successful patronage of Eminem and Dre's ensuing comeback album 2001 that the genre and its artists would regain the national spotlight. 2000's All Star Up and Smoke Tour would reunite much of the NWA and Death Row families, and during time spent on the road, Dre, Ice Cube, MC Ren, guest star Snoop Dogg, and Eminem began recording in a mobile studio. A comeback album entitled Not These Niggas Again was planned, and would include DJ Yella, who had not been present on the tour. However, due to busy and conflicting schedules as well as the obstacles of coordinating three different record labels, Priority, No Limit and Interscope, obtaining the rights to the name NWA and endorsing the whole project to gain exclusive rights, the album never materialized. Only two tracks from these sessions would be released, the aforementioned Shinchek, with Snoop Dogg as a member of NWA, from 2000's Next Friday soundtrack and Hello from Ice Cube's 2000 album War and Peace Volume 2, The Peace Disc.
Both songs would also appear on NWA's remastered Greatest Hits. There would also be partial reunions on other projects, notably Set It Off, from Snoop Dogg's The Last Meal, 2000, which featured MC Ren and Ice Cube, and the DOC's The Shit, from his 2003 album Deuce, featuring MC Ren, Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg and 6-2. Dr. Dre and DJ Yellow were present in the studio for the latter song. In addition to the greatest hits initially released by Priority in 1996, Capital and Ruthless Records jointly released in 1999, a compilation that contained songs by other rap artists and only three songs from the actual group but various solo tracks from the five members. The success of the album prompted a second volume, The NWA Legacy, Volume 2, three years later. It emulated the format of its predecessor, containing only three genuine NWA tracks and many solo efforts by the crew members. In 2007, a new Greatest Hits package was released, entitled In 2014, Ice Cube appeared on MC Ren's remix for Rebel Music. This was the first time the duo had worked together since the NWA reunion in 2000. And on June 27, 2015, MC Ren and DJ Yella joined Ice Cube during his solo set as part of the BET Experience show at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. This marked the first reunion performance of the group, minus Dr. Dre, in 15 years. Following a 27-year hiatus, the group reunited with surviving members Ice Cube, MC Ren, Dr. Dre and DJ Yella taking the stage during the second weekend of the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival in April 2016 just days following the group's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. New Line Cinema representatives announced to Entertainment Weekly's Hollywood Insider blog that NWA's story was in development to become a feature film for theatrical release in 2012. However, it was delayed to sometime in 2014. The script was researched and written by filmmaker S. Lee Savage and radio veteran Alan Wankus, who worked closely with Easy es widow, Tomika Woods Wright. Ice Cube and Dr. Dot Dre act as producers of the film. In September 2011, John Singleton was selected as director. Ice Cube and Singleton previously collaborated on Boys and the Hood, a movie that was nominated for an Academy Award, and Ice Cube also played the part of the character Fudge in Singleton's Higher Learning. Casting calls began in the summer of 2010. There were rumors of Lil Easy E playing his late father Easy E and Ice Cube's son and fellow rapper O'Shea Jackson Jr. playing his father as well. Ice Cube stated of the movie, We're taking it to the nooks and crannies, I think deeper than any other article or documentary on the group, he said. These are the intimate conversations that helped forge NWA to me, I think it's interesting to anybody who loves that era and I don't know any other movie where you can mix gangster rap, the FBI, LA riots, HIV, and fucking feuding with each other. This movie has everything from Daryl Gates and the Battering Ram. In August 2012, F. Gary Gray was selected as director rather than Singleton. The film, named Straight Outta Compton, had been picked up by Universal Pictures who hired Jonathan Herman in December 2013 to draft a new script and brought in Will Packer to executive produce. On February 21, 2014, director F. Gary Gray announced a March 9, 2014 open casting call for the film via his Twitter account. There were also open casting calls in Atlanta and Chicago. Rapper YG auditioned to play MC Ren in the film. The project was scheduled to start filming in April 2014 but was pushed back due to casting delays. On June 18, 2014, Universal officially announced that the NWA biopic Straight Outta Compton would be released August 14, 2015. It was also confirmed that Ice Cube's son, O'Shea Jackson Jr., would play a younger version of his father in the movie. O'Shea Jr. joined Jason Mitchell and Corey Hawkins who will portray group members Eazy E and Dr. Dre, respectively, in the film. To round out the cast of NWA, Aldous Hodge plays MC Ren and Neil Brown Jr. portrays DJ Yella. In early July 2014, casting directors for the NWA biopic issued a casting call for extras and vintage cars in the Los Angeles area for scenes in the movie. According to the casting call release, the film began filming in August 2014 and was released a year later on August 14, 2015. The film received positive reviews and grossed over $200 million worldwide. Although the group disbanded in 1991, they remain one of the greatest and most influential hip-hop groups, leaving a lasting legacy on hip-hop music in the following decades. Their influence, from their funky, bass-driven beats to their exaggerated lyrics, 
was evident throughout the 1990s and even into the present, and is often credited as bridging the white-slash-black American musical lines with their appeal to white Americans in the late 1980s. In Dr. Dre's 1999 single Forgot About Dre, Eminem pays homage to the group, rapping So what do you say to somebody you hate or anyone trying to bring trouble your way, want to resolve things in a bloodier way? Then just study a tape of N.W.A. referring to the negative reception of N.W.A.'s works by the mainstream radio, which considered their songs to be violent. A scene in the music video for the 2005 single Hate It or Love It by the game featuring 50 Cent shows Taquan Richmond and Zachary Williams, portraying a youthful game and 50 Cent respectively, being caught spray-painting N.W.A. on a wall, resulting in their subsequent arrest by two policemen. The game also has a tattoo that says N.W.A. on the right side of his chest. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.